Welcome everybody to another Redline Hot Wheels Blister Pack Liberation for April 30th, 2015. You can call or text me with your questions at 503-956-3708. And remember, that specific time. This liberation is brought to you by David Williamson, the toy car collector. That is me. You can email me, david at toycarcollector.com or toycarcollector at gmail.com. That's toycarcollector at gmail.com. Remember, what you see here may or may not be for sale on my website, but everything that I do add to my website is featured on the What's New page. You can reach that page from the main page by clicking on What's New or just simply type into your web browser toycarcollector.com slash new underscore cars dot htm. When you get toys from different people, you never know what you're going to get. So get your toys from the toy car collector and you will always be happy. I guarantee it. Now remember... I buy old Hot Wheels collections. That is my main interest, 1968 to 1977 Hot Wheels. So let's get started on what is going to be one of my greatest adventures for this month. I'm going to open each and every one of these blister packs, and there are 10 of them. And there are a variety of reasons to open these blister packs, but the main reason is because I want to. And let's push these back out of the way. Oh, yes. It's been a bumper crop of Hot Wheels this month over here at the Toy Car Collector. It's amazing what has been for sale. Let me just grab my stuff here and we'll get ready. Guess I'm not quite ready. I just love opening up blister packs. I have a I put in a new shelf in my office just to store the blister packs that I'm waiting to open. I've got 10 today, and I've got 7 more for my next video. All I need is 3 more. So let's start today with this beautiful red demon. Look at this thing. Now this one has had the button torn out of it. That's kind of a common thing from the 1970 period because they determined that those metal buttons were dangerous and you could slash yourself with one, I suppose. So they took them out and gave the cars away without the buttons. This is a 1970 package. It has all the 1970 models listed on the back. It's easy to open a blister pack. I've done it a million times. Well, not quite that many, but I know I've done it a thousand times. You just kind of give it a little grip on the bottom and you just pull it right open. You don't want to be too hard on the package because the packages themselves can fetch anywhere from $10 to $30. People love to use them for display of their other cars. There's a lot of Hot Wheels that you just can't afford to buy in a package. So why not just put your car, your loose car, in a original blister pack? All right, let's just wipe this off a little bit. You'll see that even coming out of a package, this car does have nearly perfect paint, but the top paint, not so much. Some of that just pops off in little dots. Not sure how it does that, but I guess it bubbles first, or bubbled when they made it, or it's bubbled somewhere along the line, and then that is what ha looks like later. So that, we're going from the least expensive to the most expensive in this little adventure today. So we started with the Demon. And now we're going to go to a hot heap. This is a 1968 model. It's kind of a shame. It's in an original blister pack that's unpunched. That little punch out there, it's still there, hanging on by a chad or two. And it's got the button in it. It's got a little dirt in there. But um, this particular car has a little bit of corrosion on the bottom. And sometimes you get a car from a person, but they don't really tell you that it's got corrosion on it. And that may or may not make it worthwhile for you in your collection, depending on how picky you are. This car is an, also a 1970 package because it's a 68 model, but they just kept making it for a few years, including in the 1970 model year. Might have been an early in the model year because there's only just a few here. Just the heavyweights are listed for 1970. No, I take that back. There's a bunch of 70s over here. I'm not sure this what the uh, exact mix is on that, but I do make mistakes from time to time, even after 30 years of collecting. So let's go ahead and open this one up. Let's see, this got a little crack there, but let's see. Let's try to be careful, as careful as we can. I don't like to tear them up too bad. 
Yeah, you just try to find a weak spot. This one's, boy, this one's holding on. Oh, wait a minute. Oh, no, that's, ooh, that's cracking the bubble. I don't like that. I prefer to keep these semi-intact if I can. Oh, this is a tough one. You know, I don't run into them like this too often. Uh, not sure what I'm going to do. I guess I just keep pulling. There we go. I think we got an opening now. All right, we got an opening. We got an opening. All right, let's go all the way to the button this time. All right, let's pull this puppy out. Let's see how she can get her out. And down. Oh, one of the, oh, I remember why I had to open this one. Because one of the uh, wheel caps was no longer on the car. It had come off. Nice button in there. Look at that. See, now take a look, close look at this button. You'll notice that even though it's brand new, there's a few nicks on it. It's typical. Got a little rub across here. That's because these things were all stacked up on top of each other and they're metal, so they kind of hurt each other. So we'll put that off to the side. We'll take a look at what we've got here. Yeah, this car, the front wheel cap had fallen off. It was right off in, in the package. I don't know if it's any good or not. That wheel cap, it may not be any good, so let's see if we can snap that back on there. Mm, not really. I think I tried to push it back on in the package. I have a little tool. We'll try that. All right, here's the wheel tool. This is a reproduction of the original wheel tool, which came uh, with the, uh, what was that? That's the tune-up tower. It had one of these in the box, and I think also the little, uh, little uh, tune-up little carry case. But I think this wheel is probably distorted somehow, so it's not going to go back on. Well, yeah, it's it's just a bad wheel. Now, this tune-up, this uh, wheel tool, you stick it in here around the axle like that, and you just push this on. Uh, but there's just no grip to it, so we'll have to get another cap off uh, another good car and put that on there. But the car looks nice. It's aqua Hong Kong, white interior, got a nice glow to it. Got that little bit of corrosion on the bottom, but it actually typically doesn't look as bad out of the package as it seems to look in the package. I'll just dust this off real quick. With a quick blow of the air compressor. Uh, sorry about the wheel, but we'll put that one over there. She'll look real good with that demon in place. All right, the next car today is a 1969. The cl classic 36 Ford Coupe. Now, the 36 Ford Coupe, if you were 10 years old in 19... 69 you definitely had one of these and loved it. I think it was the most popular car It still is the most popular car of the of the uh, that series this particular blister pack had to be stapled I didn't notice that when I bought it. I thought it was fine, but hey It's gonna be pulled out of there. Oh look at that shiny base now this is a dark blue, and they made a million of these dark blue ones for some reason. I never did find out why they were making a bunch of these, but they seem to be all over the place. At one time in the uh, 80s, there was a guy in California that had a thousand of these in the blister pack. Maybe he had more, I don't know, but he was selling for 20 bucks a piece back in the day. It was a long time ago, but even then you couldn't get your hands on many of them because people would just buy them all up, take them to toy shows. But uh, there was something wrong with the paint. They just didn't spray it right. I think they rejected all of them or something. But if you look at that, it's real thick paint on the side. And you can see like paint dots and you can see through it. And then the rumble seat paint didn't work out real well. It's real common on this model, but still pretty. And it's still brand new, blister pack fresh. All right, what's next? Hey, how about a Red Baron? There's a beautiful Red Baron. This one actually came out of an original case that was just recently opened. And it was nice. The fellow had about 30 of them when I got to them. And uh, I picked up all the Red Barons that had the shiny helmets. And I think I am I think I had maybe a 10 out of the 30 had shiny helmets. And uh, I think I'm down to this one and one more in the package of what I got from the fellow. Pulled out a few for myself. And let's see what we've got. Isn't that nice? Red Baron with a shiny helmet. It's just a beautiful, beautiful Hot Wheels car. Look at that thing. Look, it just glows. Just glows. Everybody had the Red Baron and the Paddy Wagon. Very noticeable. Everybody loves those. All right, on to another 68. This is a silhouette, also in a 1970 package. Here's the price tag on that, 72 cents back in the day. Looks like they probably bought it at a grocery store with a ka-chink, ka-chink, ka-chink price dealy bop. I remember when I was a kid, I always wanted to get my hands on one of those and maybe go around price some stuff. Looked like it would be a lot of fun. Alrighty, let's see. Ah, 
So just pull this out. A silhouette button. And this is a rose-colored silhouette. Now, the silhouette was put together in two pieces, and it's living proof that they painted these pieces separately before they spun up the rivets and put them back, put them together. I'm going to wipe that off with a little rag. Nice little rag there. Because, uh, and they always have like a little, it seems like they always have like a little fog around the motor. Is that because the chrome has some sort of a chemical that comes off of it? I'm not sure. Anyway, the, typically the top part of the silhouette is really pretty. And then the bottom part of the silhouette is kind of ugly. I'm not sure why. But, uh, you know, one time somebody had two silhouettes. And it, one was dark pink on the top and light pink on the bottom. The other one was just the opposite. That was really kind of strange. Okay, let's see. Here's a real shame here. This is a 69 classic. 32 Ford Vicky, and this thing is smoking beautiful. It is so beautiful. And it was only 39 cents back in the day at the Woolco store. That's pretty amazing. 39 cents. Okay, you can't buy nothing for 39 cents. So candy bar is on sale, and that's rare. How about that chrome base? Well, you know, actually, without the light shining on it, that chrome base has really kind of got a lot of corrosion on it, and I hate corrosion because I'm always afraid it's going to jump from one car to the other and just corrode up everything. I did know a fellow who left his cars outside, sort of. He uh, owned a nursery, and he had a pole building, and in that pole building, he built himself a little room, and then he put up display cases all over that room and put his red lines in there. And there was no heat in that room, and you don't want to do that. You don't want your red lines to be where moisture is, because they will be ruined. Look at this thing. This is beautiful. Don't you just love that color? That is so pretty. Can you see the corrosion on the base? It's really, sometimes it's hard to really see, but you, yeah, there you go. You can see it right there. That is nasty. Let's see if we can wipe some of it off. I don't think so. Well, I feel better once I've wiped it off because then I feel like it's not going to just get all over everything. But that is a beautiful car. It really is pretty. I love it when they shine like that. All right, what's next? Next here we've got a 1970 Ferrari 312P. I love the Ferrari 312P because it just handles the color real nice. Hard to get the front and back, front and back, no, front and back to, uh, to be the same color. In this case, it's pretty darn close. And I've had this one for a long time, and I paid a lot more money for it than it was worth. But I really like it, and I tried to sell it. Nobody wanted it. So out of the package, it's going to come. It's actually going to be worth more money out of the package than in the package. Because not everybody collects the uh, packaged red lines. It's awfully expensive to do. And, yeah, you can't really see them. You can't touch them as well. So... Yeah, here we go. So we get the car, and we get the sticker sheet. These sticker sheets go for about 20 bucks a piece. So there's 20 bucks right there. I'll put that over there. And the package is really, really nice. You can put another Grand Prix car in there. That's a beauty. That's a beauty. Maybe I'll leave the button in there, too. Yeah, I'll leave this. yeah I'll just take that out. I'll take that button out. I'll switch in there and grab it. Now, you know, if, you, if it's a little easier to grab it if you have one of these needle nose pliers couple different sizes and you can reach in underneath here and just grab onto something like that pen a little easier to pull it out oh, come on there it is all right got the button out and that little white card we'll leave that in there that's real popular for people people like that little white card makes everything look real nice that's a really nice package that's a real nice good color all right let's take a look here let's wipe this guy up get the dust off of all those years 1970. Wow. Wasn't Nixon president back then? All right. There you go. There you go. Look at that. That's a beauty. That's a beauty. That is a beauty. You know, this. some of the models have the lines that stick up and some of the lines uh, are indentated. Is that what you call it? Indented? Recessed? Oh, I like that better. Recessed. And some are recessed and some are anti-recessed. That's probably not a word either. Are protruding? I don't think that's the opposite of recessed, but hey, let's go with that for today. All right, look at that. Look at that. Oh, man, look at that. Let's see, how close can this focus? No, not that close. Okay. I'm using my 
cell phone actually to make this video. It's a Galaxy Note 4 and it has a fantastic camera. I just love it. Galaxy Note 3 also had a fantastic camera, but the Galaxy Note 2 did not. All right. Here's one, half blister. Actually a really nice looking yellow. I bought this because I thought, you know, I want to, I, I really like a, a beautiful yellow sea cider. You know, one that was mint and crisp. But this one's nice, but it's not really, you know, it's not mint. It, it, well, it is mint in the package, sort of speaking, but I don't like to call anything mint. On my website, you'll find that every my top rating is mint minus. Just, yeah, you put the minus in there just to cover everything. I'd probably sell more stuff if I called everything mint, but then you get into the whole pissing match over, oh, that, you know, had a one little ding here. And so I just call it mint minus, and that covers everything but if it came out of the blister pack it's probably going to be mint minus maybe a little flaw noted if you look at this car real closely you'll notice that there's a big spot right there right there that's yeah, a big spot not bad though not bad now this is yellow it looks a little more limey than yellow this particular one so i'm not sure if it's exactly yellow i think it's yellow it's got pretty decent motor but some chrome motors can be better than that they can be shinier the base is nice, and you can always tell a car that's never been touched from a car that has been touched. Let's see if I can show you real quick. Take a look at this Beatnik Bandit. Okay, this Beatnik Bandit has definitely been touched. If you notice there, I'm not sure how that happens exactly, but you see the browning? Yeah, all that browning. If a car has browning on it and it's in a blister pack, that means somebody's put that in the blister pack after touching it. So always look out for that because you're blister pack cars are always going to be nice and clean they may not be shiny but they're going to be nice and clean like this let's take a look at a couple more yeah you know whoa down goes the phone sorry about that people all right someday i'll have editing skills and i can uh, make these videos and change them up after i've made them but right now i just make the video straight out front to back start to be finish and whatever happens happens yeah, there you go. And if you notice, like my uh, titles and things are all just three by five cards. Well, I'm just not a video processor kind of guy. I'd like to be, but I don't know if I have the time to learn a new something new like that. So look at that. That is a beauty. All right, we'll put this back over here. And oh, okay, the next one is this one. This is another car that I bought specifically to take out of the package because. I really wanted a smoking shiny gold 57 bird. The package is nice, but not that nice because even at, even for 50 year old cars, people that collect the blister packs do expect them to look like new, which seems pretty silly for 50 year old paper. But you know, hey, we can be silly. We're spending our money, and that's what we want. And and it does exist in small quantities, so we that's what we seek out. So anyway, this car has a ton of corrosion on the base, and you'll be able to see it better once I take it out of the package. But it is a beautiful car. Ah, there it goes. And the package is nice. Whoa, come on. Hey, look at that. Yeah. Hope the color looks all right. Can you see the color good? I got enough light here. Look at that. Gold. I got an overhead light here, too, that shines pretty good on this. Yeah, look at that. Oh, yeah. Yes, you notice that front wheel's a little tweaked. That's what that tool comes in handy for. Where'd it go? There it is. You just put it in here behind the wheel, and you can't really get totally in there, so sometimes you got to take the wheel off. Now, this 57 Bird, you can pretty comfortably take the wheel off of that. Can you see? Right there. It won't really hurt it. Other cars you must be very, very careful of. If anybody has any hints on how to... All you know, 100% get these off without breaking anything. I'd sure like to know what they are because uh, I always thought maybe if you put a little W, drop a WD-40 down in there, maybe it would loose, you know, some sort of penetrant or something. But if you take try to do this same thing on a '68 Hong Kong beat, uh, custom Barracuda, you're going to end up with a car with no wheel on it, and you're not going to be happy. And I've done that. I've done it many times. That that's a beautiful car. That one would go good. Like so, you got that. You got the like the '57. You got the '36 coupe. You got your hot heap. Your demon. You can see kind of a theme here, right? It's just like the custom concept cars, right there. That's a nice theme. I got one more 
to show you. And it is a 69 Custom Continental. When I opened this one up out of the pack package or out of the box that it came in, I thought, oh my God, that thing is smoking. You know, sometimes a guy will have a bunch of cars for sale and you'll pick out a few and then you'll get them in and you'll go like, oh my gosh, I should have bought every car that guy had if they were all this nice because this thing is smoking. I love the I love the Continental. I think if I got rid of all my Hot Wheels, which is never going to happen, I would uh, keep just keep the Continentals, which I have about quite a few of them. They really do look nice. They just, they just hold the paint so nice. Here it comes. Here it comes. Here it is. Here it is. Look at that. Look at the glow. Wow. Look at the glow. It's almost like they clear coated this thing. Yeah. Yeah, that's just, she's a beauty. Yeah, that's a beautiful car. I just love that. It's it's kind of a dark. Now, the once it's out of the package, you can see that the, uh, the roof is real dark. The roof is dark, but that thing is so pretty. So that would be like a dark rose. On my website, I would call it Rose Dark. Just so it doesn't screw with the alphabetizing, I call it Rose Dark. And that means that it's dark either by extra paint or by, and that's orange, Hong Kong made. Blue windows always signifies Hong Kong. Let's see what other tips I can give you here. The Seasiders come with either a red or white boat. The red boat was not reversible, but it would look like that, sort of, uh, versus the white boat. Kind of hard with the yellow. You can display them without the boat too, if you like. And let's see, there's demons. Demons, some demons have white interiors. Some people like that better. You can have two collections. Collections, one with white interior, one with dark interior. The 36 Ford Coupe, there's some variations in that. They have a black interior. They also have a champagne interior and they also have a white interior. When you open up the little back door there, which you have to be very careful of because they will break. Uh, that one I don't want to open up. There are some little nubs on the back of the seat, and so they have what they, I think they call a five knob and a seven nub, nub or knob, something like that. 57 T-Birds can be had with white interior or dark interior. They uh, make a nice variation in collecting. The Hot Heap can have a white interior or a dark interior or a, sort of a medium interior. And though these can be pulled out, if you jerk on that hard enough, it'll come right out and you can swap them around. The uh, Red Baron is just red, but it can be had in a variety of shades. This one is particularly dark and shiny. It's quite pretty. And they could be light, not lighter, they could be darker. The Rose, the Rose Silhouette. I don't know if I've ever seen a rose with a dark interior, but there are some dark interiors, especially on green, I've noticed. The Vicky. The Vicky, I believe, is always white interior. And uh, this is kind of a... People all kind of look for this not to be scratched. You see that has a big dot bang in it. But people do like that. Not you don't want it. That's not bad. But um, people really don't want to have those all banged up. So I think that is covers it for today. So let's just review what we saw. It, this has been. Oh, remember, I buy Redline collections. I love old Hot Wheels. So if you have a collection, give me a call. It's been a lot of activity in the selling of collections this month. I've got, actually got three collections on their way to me right now as we speak. And this has been a Redline Hot Wheels Blister Pack Liberation for April thirtieth. 2015. If you have any questions, please call or text me at 503-956-3708 Pacific Time. This has been brought to you by David Williamson, the Toy Car Collector. That is me. And you can email me, toycarcollector at gmail.com. Toycarcollector at gmail.com. What you see here may or may not be for sale on my website. Everything added starts out featured on the What's New page. So go to my main Go to my website at toycarcollector.com and click on the new, uh, the little new text right on the upper left. When you get toys from different people, you never know what you're going to get. Sometimes you get this, boom. Sometimes you get that, Sometimes you get beauties, da 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 da. But you never know. But when you get toys from me, you will. Always be happy, I guarantee it. And I buy old Hot Wheels collections, and it's been a red line, and it's been a call and text, and brought to you by David Weiss, and an email text, oh, it's over. And thank you.